the most unbeatable sports team, team, most unbeatable sports team is the American basketball team. If the American America has a population of 333 million. 333 million. Serbia have a population of 6 million. Wow. <laughs> if you told me in 1995, 96, 97, 98 that, oh, you know that Serbia could almost beat the US team. Huh? I didn't watch the game. Why am I, go why am I gonna watch America, the basketball team, face another basketball team? Because it's obvious. It's obvious. So for me, I was like, US, Serbia, no offense to Serbia, I'm like, it's the US basketball team and it's their strongest team. This ain't like 04 where they sent a B team. This is their strongest team. What am I gonna watch? Now I regret not watching because Looking back at the highlights, I'm like, wow, this was a classic. This was amazing, and America almost lost. And my lord, if these guys had lost. But and I've and I've and I've held this all the way through, although it's a bit nuanced, and we'll I will get to why it's a bit nuanced during the, the, the video. That the most unbeatable sports team, team, most unbeatable sports team is the American basketball team. If the American basketball team put out their best team, that's that's the caveat. If they put out like a B team, okay, it's debatable. If they put out their best team, I believe that they are the most unbeatable sports team on planet Earth. And that is not the same you can say for any other sports team. For any other sports team, oh, you have a chance. You have a chance. Like Canada and ice hockey, they're not unbeatable. Um, bro, there is no super team you would say in football. Rugby, New Zealand are, are very um, beatable. In cricket, India or Australia are very beatable. Like the only sports I can think of where, no, if this team puts out their strongest team, nobody can beat them is America. Just based on just how far ahead they've been in basketball. What? Things might be changing. Because I was looking at this game and I was like, because I was like, no, no, no. For me, I'm, I've not even watched any of the America games because see, for me, as a sports fan, I want to watch something that is exciting. And for me, excitement comes with competitiveness. So two top tier teams, let's go. The San Antonio Spurs, Miami Heat back in those 2000s. Cavaliers against Golden State Warriors, where they have two tier teams going at it, boom. I don't want to watch a lopsided affair when one team is clearly super talented and another team has maybe one talent. But you have to give credit to Serbia and what those guys did. Um, and shout out to your boy. I'm never going to be a fan of Steph. And you see, so the thing about Steph is this, is that, you see, when I play the basketball, or when I do play basketball, my main thing is shooting. So I appreciate him being, hands down, the greatest shooter in basketball history. For a guy who just does it at a super amateur level just for fun, I'm like, wow. To see excellence in elite, I'm like, bro, this is like S-tier talent. But in terms of an overall basketball player, I'm an Iverson guy. I'm a Jordan guy. I'm a Penny Hardaway guy. So for me, those are those those, those, those dudes are different in that sense. Um, but shout out to your boy. Like, I mean, I I think the thing here is you have to give him credit because when it came down to be clutch and to say what's up, he stepped up. He stepped up. Because it's not what you do in the first three quarters. It's what you do in the fourth quarter when the game is tight. When every possession matters, who steps up and who says what's up? So your boy, shout out to your boy, he, he did it. But I've always said this, and this is what I'll always affirm. If, hopefully not, but if my life was on the line and I need someone to make a contested three-point shot to save my life or to save the earth, reality. I respect Steph. I respect Clay Thompson. I respect, um, oh gosh, I, I know the name is now, now leaves me now. The guy from the Indiana Pacers was also bold as well for me. Oh my gosh, how can I forget his name? Oh, so, oh no, 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 wait, what, what's his name? Reggie Miller. <laughs> Reggie Miller. So, yeah, but shout out to them, but if 
the greatest shooter is Steph, just in terms of just what he's done for three points. But my life is on the line. High pressure moment. The final shot, if I won the ball in one time, this is one shot. The final shot to save earth and save life, Reality. That is the guy that I'll, I'll always choose. And as I say, this is, this is the most clutch moment in sports history, what he did here in this game. But that takes not away from, from Steph, because Steph said, what's up? Just I just don't think he's one of the best players of all time. He's the greatest shooter of all time. I just think I can name several players better than, than Steph. Um, what are you going to say about this freaking dude, man? It's like, and this is why I say that Serbia were always going to lose. But you have to give Serbia credit. The fact that this was competitive, the fact that this was competitive is insane. I was like, excuse me for me. I'm like, no, Serbia, this is going to be easy. Bro, the, it came down to, the, to the, like the last few seconds, last 40, 30, 30 seconds. And it's so funny. So there's a video on Twitter because Kamala Anthony went there with his son, Kian, to watch the game. And Kamala Anthony literally says on one position that, yo, LeBron, give that ball to Durant. Durant's Take it old school. Screw that bum ass Steve Care. Take it old, old school. ISO, ISO. Get in your position and say what's up. And Durant is literally one of the best at ISO, mid range, pull up, boom. So, and when you have that individual quality, it's very hard to say what's up. Um, which is why I can't, I can't give America credit for this dope you. And of course, America should be happy. And of course, they should cheer. The only way America gets a win in this is they put on a show, and they are supremely elaborate, and they just don't. They just completely trounce the opposition, which is what's made the dream team so special. Is like no, we are just on a whole other level to everyone else. But the narrative from this is. Wow. I'm sorry, that's the narrative. Yes, they lost. Yes, America won. And yes, now some American players, Durant, are saying, like, wait, wait, how come we're not getting more, more love? I'm sorry. This should not have been competitive. The fact that Serbia... Let me tell you something about, about Serbia. Do you know the national sport in Serbia is not basketball? The national sport in Serbia is for football. Um, so it's a thing, it's Partizan Belgrade and Red Star Belgrade. Those are the two huge teams. So the main sport is football. And I'd make an argument, based off of Djokovic, I believe more kids are probably more into tennis than basketball. So basketball may be the third or fourth biggest sport in Serbia. America has a population of 333 million. 333 million. Serbia have a population of 6 million. <laughs> 300 million, 6 million. 300 million where basketball is one of your main sports from all the way from youth. 6 million where basketball might be the third or fourth biggest sport. So what these guys were able to do against America was freaking amazing. Like, and this is why I say about sports. Adam, as of right now, they're in pain. They don't want to hear about, oh my gosh, you did well. They're like, oh my gosh, we, we could have won. We could have won that freaking game. So forget about how, oh my gosh, we're competitive. We, we did really well. No, they must be like, oh, no, we could have beaten them. We could have beaten them. But when more time passes, they will realize that, do you know what we did? And what we almost did? Based off of our resources and how small our country is and what we're going up against is insane. Because, guys, I'm sorry. Um, a team that has... A team that has Steph Curry, Durant, and LeBron. LeBron is arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter of all time. Kevin Durant, you can make an argument, is a top 10 player of all time. Those are three guys. And for Serbia, this is their only talent. They only had one truly world star player. Ali, for me, for for um, Emmy, Ali named a few. They only had one true all star player. And do you know what makes it even crazier? Let's, let's tell you what makes it even, even crazier. Look at their bench. Look at their bench. 
<laughs> he didn't play. This is the guy that was one of the best players on the winning team of the NBA championships. So one of the main stars of the team that won the NBA championships, he didn't even play a single minute of this game. Rightfully so, because if it was down to Tatum, Team USA lose. So it just shows you what they're going up against. Um, because you have to understand that the whole nature of basketball. You see, for foot, I'm, I'll give you an example of football. You see, in football, it's more likely for a shock to happen. So in O2, France, defending champions, amazing team, Senegal, first ever World Cup, they beat France 1-0. <laughs> um, you look at the last World Cup, first Saudi Arabia against Argentina with Messi, with Lautaro Martinez, with Di Maria, all these guys, Saudi Arabia beat them. But so the, the difference though is in football, you can have three amazing players, four amazing players, based off of it's being 11 v 11, based off of the wide playing area, there are so many variables in football, there is a higher likelihood of a shock to happen. But the difference in when we now come to basketball is because it's five on five, two amazing players, no, one amazing player can make a difference. If you've got two amazing players, oh my gosh, if you've got three amazing players, so you have to take into context what Serbia were almost able to, to do. Okay, let me, if Serbia had beaten this US team with all these players, it would be the greatest shock in sporting history. You cannot name me a greater shock in sporting history if Serbia had beaten this team. You, you, you can't. Based on the nature of basketball, the nature of how one or two superstars can drastically increase your chances of winning based on the small surface area and the dimensions of basketball, boom. But that's, but it's, this is the beauty of this format. So if this was like a seven game series, it's a gentleman's sweep. Now remember, America have, this is now, they've not beaten them three times in a row. So one exhibition, one time in the group stage, now time now. So if this was a series, it's either a sweep or a gentleman's sweep. But the beauty about this one-off games, which is how football works, is one bad day. All it takes is one bad day. You see, in a series, you can have, see, in a series, you can have three bad days. Remember, it's first two, four. You can have, you can have three bad days. In this format, that's like football. One bad day, you're out. So this could have been America's bad day. Serbia get the dub. America, you're out. It's done. There isn't a game two for adjustments or a game three. You're out. And even if I feel that a series is a better measure of who the better team is, because, oh, okay, I beat you. Okay, beat, 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 beat me again. Okay, you, you beat me once. I beat you five times. Surely the guy who beat someone five times is better than the guy who only beat the guy once. But what I like about this is that it's a sense of urgency, the sense of get, of like, no, 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 you've got to get it right now. If you have a bad day, tough luck. It is what it is. You have to execute, get it, get it done. Um, so here's the thing. My, the basketball is changing. You see, when I, see, I'm trying to understand where I grew So I started watching basketball in the mid-90s. So I knew of the dream team. I knew of that 96 team. I, and watching basketball then, no other country existed. No other country existed. And America was so far ahead, the concept of anybody saying what's up was almost sacrilegious to even say. So this is what happened in the dream team. So the 1992 dream team called zero timeouts and beat their opponents by an average of 43.8 points at the Olympic Games. <laughs> That's insane. Um, so, hold on, let me expand this a bit more. All right. Um, the head coach of that Uber Tantic team was Chuck Daly, who led the Pistons to back-to-back -back titles in 89 and 90. Daly had told Magic that a coach for a group with this much time, shouldn't have to call timeouts. And his players didn't let him down, as he didn't have to call even one of them 
on the way to winning gold. So that's this is the time I'm coming from where timeouts, adjustments, no, because they were just so much better than the opposition. But this was of a different time. And I feel that what you're seeing now in basketball is the world, the world is catching up. The world is catching up. The world is catching up. And the fact that Jokic, the, the solitary superstar, up against three bona fide legends. Jokic was going up against a team that had three all-time players. Three guys who you say are some of the greatest basketball players of all time. The fact that Jokic as a solitary superstar and his um, teammates almost beat that team. Bro, it's like the world, the world I knew of basketball is, has now changed. Because I would never, if you told me in, 19, in 95, 96, 97, 98 that, oh, you know that Serbia could almost beat the US team. Huh? What? What? Well, Serbia, US could be competitive. If you told me that in 1997, I'd be like, <laughs> shut up, you're lying. Shut up, you're lying. But basketball, it's, it's changing. It's changing. And remember, the best players in, the, in basketball right now, Jokic, Doncic, Yanis. And Embiid only just became a US citizen. <laughs> so, the, it's the best players in the NBA are probably not. And so now it's now a debate between, if you look at the American players, it's the old guard. Because, yeah, and, and that is what is so interesting. This, come the next Olympics, they'll be retired. In four years' time, Durant might still be around. LeBron will be gone in three years' time. Corey most likely will be gone. So now it will be for the new generation, which is why it is so telling that a guy of the new generation did, did not even play. And I'll be real with you. Take Durant's... Because this was, I was even... I, I actually even said this um, before the game. I said that nobody has a chance. The only way you have a chance is take away LeBron, take away Durant, you have a chance. So if, for instance, you took away two of, take away two of these guys... Serbia probably win. <laughs> Serbia will probably win. If you take away LeBron and Corey, you take away LeBron and Durant, you take away Durant and Corey, Serbia will probably win. Because if it was down to Corey and LeBron and just those other guys with no Durant, or it was down to Durant and LeBron without those other guys, or Durant and Corey without LeBron, Serbia probably win. So the issue, though, is once the new generation comes through, once... Durant retires, Corey retires, LeBron retires, and it's now this new generation of Devin Booker, of Tatum, of Jalen Brown. But the world is catching up. Serbia are only going to get better. I'm probably watching. I'm going to see Serbia do is a football is a number one sport, but we're probably better as basketball. So what Serbia are probably going to do now is like let's actually invest. We have a generational talents in Jokic, let's actually in hire more coaches, invest in basketball to a point where there'll probably be more Serbians in the NBA and come the next FIBA World Cup, the next Olympics, Serbia are now going to be able to be beat America comfortably. Because I think once you now have the new generation against a Serbia team that's now going to be better with a Jokic who's going to be better, it's going to be a whole new contest. Because this, this win was from the old guard. <laughs> This win was from old guard. Listen, LeBron and Corey, they are past their peak. Now they're just vibing out. They're past their peak. Durant, he's past his peak as well. You know? So, and look, I've always said this. Oh, and also, by the way, um, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll tell us. I've always said this right now. LeBron is the greatest basketball player of all time. Objectively speaking, taking everything into account, objectively speaking, he's the greatest basketball player of all time. His all-round game, how long he's been doing it, how, what he's been able to do at his age, pound for pound, taking everything into account, bars aside, he is the greatest basketball player of all time, hands down. And you add into the kind of adversity he's had to go up against, that adds to it. 
Jordan would never allow this game to be competitive. This is no shot at LeBron, shout to pick Jordan. This is not a contest. Jordan himself will ensure, no, 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 no. Give me the ball, this is not a contest. But, and this is maybe for, this is for a different video. There is an argument of LeBron over Jordan. It's for a different video, but there is an argument for LeBron being greater than Michael Jordan. There is an argument. Jordan is the GOAT. He's the main guy. But there's an argument. But that's for a separate video. And look, guys, shout out to Serbia. France ain't doing nothing. The only way, if the only way France win gold is if the, the, the refs do something amazing. Because I think Seb, this was America's tough game, was Serbia. And I think most people would say, no, Canada should really be in this final. So, yeah, like, I... Because, I, yes, it's home team, it's home crowd. Maybe they'll be swayed by the referees. I went Benyama is a freak. But, again, I just, like... Again, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not watching the, the, the game because it's, it shouldn't be competitive. America will win. It seemed that talented, that's good. France stand no chance. And when Benyama alone cannot turn the tide of them, and also as good as and talented as when Benyama is, he uh, Jokic is on a whole other level. So yeah, America should should win. But next FIBA World Cup, next Olympics should be interesting.